Hello friends, welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So, in the first lecture we have seen that uh, how we can apply elementary row operation to get a row equivalent form of a matrix A. Okay. Now, we will see echelon form of a matrix. What do you mean by echelon form and how we can obtain equal echelon form by applying elementary row operations. Before starting uh, echelon form, we will first we will see elementary matrices. What do you mean by elementary matrices? Uh, an n cross n square matrix is called an elementary matrix E if it can be obtained from n cross n identity matrix I n using a single elementary row operations. We have already seen the last lecture that there are three basic elementary row operations. The first is you multiply uh, replace any row by multiplying it by a non zero non zero scalar. The second elementary row operation is you replace any uh, row r uh, say rth row by rth row plus c times some sth row. Okay and you can always interchange any two rows. So, these are the basic three elementary row operations. Now, if you apply an elementary row operation in many matrix A and the same elementary row operation you apply in the identity matrix I, then the then that matrix which is obtained from I is called an elementary matrix. Okay. Now, the elementary matrix set to be of type 1, 2 or 3 according to whether the elementary operation performed on I n is a type 1, 2 or 3 operation respectively. The, the three operations which we have defined, if we are applying the first operation of the identity matrix, we are saying it is a elementary, it is a elementary matrix of type 1, similarly type 2 and type 3. Now, for example, Interchanging the first two rows of I3 produces the elementary matrices. This you see, if you have identity matrix and you interchange, if you interchange first two rows, so this matrix is obtained and this matrix we call as elementary matrix. Okay. Now, let this is a result, let A is a M cross N matrices over the field F, and as and suppose that. B is obtained from A by performing an elementary row operation. Okay. Then there exists an M cross M elementary matrix E such that B is equal to E A. So, there always exists an elementary matrix E such that B is equal to E A. In fact, E is obtained from I M by performing the same elementary row operation as that what was performed on A to obtain B. Okay. If you if you obtain uh, B from A by, uh, by applying some elementary row operation and same elementary row operation you applied on I m, so we obtain E. Conversely, if E is an elementary ma m cross m matrix, then E A is the matrix obtained from A by performing the same elementary row operation as that which produce E from I m. So, converse of the statement is also true. So, let us discuss it by few examples. See, you have matrix A here, A is this matrix of order uh, you see uh, it is 3 cross 4, 3 rows 4 columns. Now, in this matrix you suppose interchange the second row of A with the first row you apply elementary row operation, you interchange uh, R 2 by R 2 by R 1. So, the new matrix is obtained which is row equivalent to A, which is 2 1 minus 1 3 the second row, the first row will be in uh, second row now 1 2 3 4 4 0 1 2. Okay. And if you have an identity matrix, okay, here is uh, order uh, 3 cross 3 and you interchange the first and the second row. So, this, this matrix is obtained and this matrix is an elementary matrix here. Okay. And E A is always equal to B, when you multiply E with B, E with A sorry, E with A, this E with A then you, you easily obtain B. 
this you can easily check ok. Now, let us take second example you see here A is this matrix ok. Now, suppose we want to transform this A into I by applying elementary row operations ok then. Now, how you how you will make uh, this as an identity matrix by uh, applying elementary row operations you see the first element is 1 here which is a non zero element you first interchange this row with the first row that is you interchange R 2 and R 1 you will obtain a new matrix B 1 which is 1 0 minus 1 this row will come here and this row will come here 0 1 0 and this 4 0 1. Now, you make 0 here with the help of this so this minus 4 times this. So, you replace R 3 by R 3 minus 4 times R 1 you get new matrix B 2 and B 2 will be equal to the first two rows remain the same and the third row this minus 4 times this will be 0, this minus 4 times this will be 0, this minus 4 times this will be 5. Now, you make 1 here to make 1 here you would simply divide this row by 5 you, you obtained this matrix B 3 which is 1 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 1. Now, to complete identity you have to make 0 here with the help of this. So, this plus this that is you replace R 1 by R 1 plus R 3. So, this will give an identity matrix B ok. Now, now uh, to obtain this matrix now to obtain this matrix from this matrix uh, what is the, what is the elementary matrix you see we have we have interchange R 2 by R 1. So, same elementary row operation you apply on identity matrix of order 3 cross 3 you replace R 2 by R 1. So, which matrix we will obtain the matrix which will obtain as this matrix E 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 which is obtained by interchanging R 2 and R 1 of identity matrix ok. Now, similarly, similarly to obtain B 2 from B 1 we have what we have done we have replaced R 3 by R 3 minus 4 times R 1. Now, you apply same elementary row operation in the identity matrix to get the new uh, new elementary matrix E 2 ok. So, so here, here if you uh, take the identity matrix and replace the third row by third row minus 4 times the first row then you get minus 4 0 1. So, this will be elementary matrix 2. Similarly, now you take the third uh, I mean B 3 how B 3 is obtained from B 2 to obtain B 3 from B 2 you have replaced you have divide simply the third row by 5. You apply the same elementary row operation in the identity matrix to get the element to get the elementary matrix cross point to this row operation. So, what will be that you simply divide the third row by 5 all the two rows are same. So, this is E 3. And similarly, the E 4 can be obtained by simply adding the first row by the third row. The same you apply the same elementary row operation in the identity matrix, you apply the same elementary row operation identity matrix to get E 4. Now, now by the theorem which we have just stated to get B 1 from A, we, uh, we have the elementary row operation E 1 ok. So, this can be written as so B 1 can be written as E 1 times A because E 1 is the elementary uh, matrix cross point to this uh, row operation. Similarly, B 2 will be E 2 into B 1, B 3 will be E 3 into B 2 and similarly, the last matrix B which is an identity matrix of course, is E 4 into B 3. Now, what we have obtained if you rep if you substitute B 3 over here, B you replace substitute B 3 here this is E 3 into B 2 ok. Then you then you replace B 2 by E 2 into B 1 and then B 1 by E 1 into A. So, what finally, we have obtained finally, we have obtained B is equals to E 4 E 3 E 2 E 1 into A ok. So, that means that means if here we have applied 4 number of uh, elementary row operations and for each elementary row operation we we obtained an I elementary matrix ok. To get the final matrix which is a row equivalent to a matrix A ok they simply E 4 into E 3 into E 2 into E 1 and the first matrix initial matrix A ok or we can say that B equal to E A where B E is simply multiplication of all elementary matrices 
in this order E4, E3, E2, E1. So, that means what I want to say that uh, if any m cross in matrix A is transformed to B by applying k number of elementary row operations, then there exists an m cross m invertible square matrix U that is a product of elementary matrices U equal to E k, E k minus 1, E k minus 2 up to E 1 such that B is equals to U into A. Okay. So, that matrix always exists and it is invertible and why, why elementary matrices are invertible? You see elementary matrices are obtained are obtained from uh, uh, identity matrix by applying some elementary row operations and applying elementary row operation you see uh, if you if you take if you see uh, uh, matrix a you apply some elementary row operation on this matrix elementary row operation and you got a new matrix b which is a row equivalent to a okay so so this matrix can be obtained either by interchanging two rows or to uh, multiply this a by an any row of this matrix a by a non zero scalar or you replace some uh, ith row by ith plus c times jth row where i not equal to j okay so we can simply say that determinant of a will be some alpha time determinant of b where alpha is not equal to 0 because 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 applying elementary row operation will not change the will not change the nature of the matrix i mean if it is invertible remains invertible okay it it simply change the it cha simply change the determinant of the matrix by some scalar because we can multiply a, a, a row by a non zero scalar so if so elementary matrices are obtained from identity matrix by applying elementary row operations so since identity matrix is invertible it has a determinant 1 so elementary matrices are also invertible because ident determinant of identity matrix will be some alpha time determinant of e where alpha is not equal to 0 and e this, this is 1 so this implies determinant of e is not equal to 0 okay so invertible mat so elementary matrix are always invertible okay and then their product also invertible because product of invertible matrix is also invertible okay now come to ecleon form of a matrix a matrix a is called an ecleon form or is said to be an ecleon form if the following two conditions hold where a leading non zero element of a of a row of a is a first non zero element on the row okay we are taking uh, the leading element as the first non zero element in that row okay so what are two properties the first property is all zero rows if any are at a bottom of the matrix if there is a row containing all zeros that must be at the bottom of the matrix number 1 number 2 each leading non zero entry in a row leading non zero entry means the first non zero entry in a row is to the right of the leading non zero entry in the preceding row if you have the second row the first non zero entry in the second row must be on the right side of the first non zero entry in the first row okay that is if rows are 1 2 up to r are the non zero rows of a matrix and if the leading non zero entry i occurs in the column ki i from 1 to r then k1 is less than k2 is less than k r so let us discuss this by uh, some examples now you see here now you, you focus on the first matrix you see first of all all the zero rows are at the bottom the row containing all zero elements is in the bottom the first property holds now you see the first leading element leading means the first non zero element is here this is a12 the first leading non zero entry here is this one the first non zero entry here is this one now this element the first non zero entry of this row is to the right of this row 
the first non zero entry of this is your right of is your right of this row the next row okay the right of this row so this satisfy the properties of the echelon form of a matrix and hence we can say that this is an echelon form now if you see second example the second example you see that there is no uh, row containing all zero okay now this is the first non zero element in this row this is a second non zero element in this this is the first non zero element in the second row and this is a third this is the um, non zero element in a third row and all the non zero rows this non zero this uh, leading element of this row is a right of this this leading element of this row is to right of this so this is an echelon form this is a echelon form of some matrix however if you see here you see this is not in echelon form because this row is a containing all zero element but it is not at a bottom of the matrix so this is not in echelon form here if you see in this example this is a first non zero element of the first row and this is a first non zero element of the second row but this non zero element is on the left of the first non zero element of the preceding row so this is not in echelon form because it must be on the right side if it is zero if it is zero then uh, we have to make zero here uh, to make it an echelon form okay so uh, this is not an echelon form now let us try this example that how we can uh, make it uh, an echelon form of the matrix so what is the, what is the problem problem is uh, 1 it is minus 3 2 then it is uh, minus 4 0 5 now suppose by applying elementary row transformation you want to find out its echelon form so so the first non zero element 1 to leave it as it is now now in this row to keep all the non zero entries on the right you see uh, if we have a in the echelon form each leading non zero entry is to the right compared to the preceding row okay to uh, to satisfy that uh, condition you take the first non zero element in the first row and make zero a below in that column all the elements must be zero in that column okay so you apply elementary row operation to make zero here you take r2 and replace r2 by r2 plus 4 times r1 if you make this elementary row operation it is minus 1 3 2 it is 0 now it is uh, this plus 4 times this is minus 12 this plus 4 times this is 30 okay now now this is the first non zero element of this row which is 1 this is the first non zero element of second row which is minus 12 and it is to the right of this row there is no row containing all the zero elements so we can say that this is a echelon form of this matrix a okay so in this way we can convert the we can find out the echelon form of a matrix now let us consider second example the second example can be framed you see we have to form, form the echelon form of this matrix so how we can do that now what is, what is the matrix now the matrix is it is 2 minus 2 4 minus 3 minus 2 then it is minus 2 minus 3 2 minus 5 1 3 minus 2 2 now you want to frame its echelon form so you leave uh, first non zero element as it is make zero here with the help of this make zero here with the help of this so you apply elementary row operations so uh, you replace r2 by r2 plus r1 so this is 2 4 minus 3 minus 2 it is 0 it is 1 it is minus 1 it is minus 7 you leave it as it is the third row you leave as it is now you make zero here with the help of this so uh, you take r3 by r3 minus 1 by 2 r uh, 1 by 2 r1 okay so it is 2 4 minus 3 minus 2 
it is 0 1 minus 1 minus 7 it is 0 it is 3 minus 2 is 1 then it is minus 2 and it is plus 3 by 2 that is uh, minus 1 by 2 then it is 2 plus 1 that is 2 plus 1 is 3 ok. Now, now uh, this is uh, ok and this is to right of this side. Now, uh, below this element make all the elements 0 ok. You pick out the first non leading element make 0 in that column leaving this element make uh, 0 to all the elements below this and the second non zero second uh, leading element I mean second non zero element in that column uh, in that row make 0 below ok. So, here you make 0 you simply replace R 3 by R 3 minus R 2. So, this will be simply 2 4 minus 3 minus 2 this is 0 1 minus 1 minus 7 this is 0 0 this is uh, 1 by 2 and this is 10 ok. So, this is ok and this is ok now yeah now it is ok you see that there is there is no uh, row containing all 0 and all the you if you take the this first uh, non 0 row this uh, first non 0 entry all the elements below this are 0 first non 0 entry second row all the element below this are 0 and they are third element. So, this is in the equilion form of this matrix ok. So, uh, this is this is all about equilion form we will see some more illustrations of equilion form and its applications uh, in the next lecture thank you.